David Barnson is with me on the show this morning, by the way. What does Microsoft's report mean for the overall market and big tech? It's still early enough that I don't know if it's going to end up being a trend, but it's certainly something I expect throughout the year that I think overall guidance has to come down, and it's mostly going to come down in big tech where expectations were the highest. This wasn't a bad report. It was just a less good report than expected. That's all it takes when valuations are that high. So that carries through for the rest of the year for other big tech companies and for the overall market? Remember, we're not in a recession right now. If we're going into a recession, you would think this would get worse, not better. Um, that Azure portion of Microsoft's business has been phenomenal. Their cloud growth has been huge. But if you have overall business slowdown, it affects itself with things like enterprise application. Microsoft is not the kind of stock that you would buy. Well, we, we owned it out of the financial crisis and did very well with it. It was a great dividend payer. They had never yeah. paid a dividend. And all of a sudden, uh, Bill Gates retired. There's no income tax in the state of Washington. George Bush cut the dividend tax. And lo and behold, Microsoft became a huge dividend payer. They just didn't keep Keep growing the dividend, and that's what we want to see. So it got ahead of itself. Got it. Thanks, David. Yeah. You're here for the hour, so yes. sit right there, please. Senator Josh Hawley, he's introduced, uh, it's called the Pelosi Act. Uh, this is all about stopping members of Congress from trading stocks. What do you think, David? Um, I think it's outrageous that this hasn't already been done. And I would point out, uh, Speaker Pelosi is saying she's open to discussing it now, but she was vehemently against yep. it before and actually dared to say, come on, I thought we believe in the free market, yeah. which I thought was rich from her. But um, there are vehicles that make it unnecessary for them to own individual stocks. Right. And if there's no nefarious activity, just the mere appearance of impropriety undermines markets, undermines faith in government. There's no reason to allow this and they have the vehicles to keep it from happening. Okay, let's see if Hawley's bill actually makes it through. It might, as a matter of fact. Uh, David, uh, Lauren, thank you. David, you've been investing in Lockheed. I'm pretty sure you recommended it. It pays a strong dividend, a growing dividend, and you've done well with it, haven't you? Very well. And in fact, it, it, yesterday it was up $8. Their earnings came out oh. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And Lockheed uh, is up about $100 a share, over 30% since the Ukraine war began. But it's up another 50 or 100 on top of that from even before the war. This is not just about Ukraine. There's a growing understanding that whether it could be a future conflict with China, uh, there are instability in Europe, that there is a need to fortify um, and modernize defense capability. And Lockheed is a great company to help produce that, their customer being the U.S. government. Um, and I think it's a good investment. Are you buying any more? Yeah, we are. Okay, got it. Thanks, David. I was watching the four o'clock report. Yeah. And I just loved it when the thing went, the stock went straight up, just on the raw numbers. But then came the call, and it just plunged. Is it like that all the time? Well, it happens. Sometimes they provide further guidance that brings it down. But you just got to remember, it's trading at 27 times earnings. That's high. It isn't like it's cheap. Right. And the, his point about, well, people are working from home, that number's coming down, not up. So that's a downward pressure on forward growth if they're dependent on this work from home mentality. You know, you're seriously beginning to make me start to think about selling it. Oh, I, I would tried that a year ago. It didn't work. No, <laughs> I wish it had worked yeah. because you would have saved me a fortune. You made me a fortune on uh, BlackRock, uh, Blackstone, Blackstone, I should yeah, say, yeah. Blackstone. <laughs> but you didn't make me any money on this one. All right. David, you're still next to me, glutton for punishment, sitting there all through the hour. Mm. You bought two stocks. You're the dividend guy. You, you look at stocks which pay a large and growing dividend. The first one you brought with us today is IBM. Now, they report this afternoon. Are they still paying 4 or 5%? Yeah, it's about 4.7%, and they've grown it every year now for about 10 years. I mean, if the dividend compared to 10 years ago is about 10%. Um, and so it's been a wonderful dividend payer. They have a great business. What's with Verizon? Verizon reported yesterday and was up, and um, they've had a lot of struggles. They've had to spend a ton of money to get 5G up and running, and they've taken on debt to do it. But what they didn't do is what AT&T did. AT&T cut their dividend. AT&T's down 50%, even though it's up a little today, because AT&T decided to go get into the content business. Yeah. Verizon stuck to what they're doing, but wireless growth last year had come down. This quarter, they reported growth in wireless subscribers. That's what you got to see. Got it. David, thank you very much yeah. indeed. Uh, hey, David, uh, you live in Newport Beach. That's on the seashore, as I recall. You got a boat? On the Pacific Ocean, uh, Newport Harbor, one of the most beautiful places to dock a boat in the world. But, you know, I don't think the issue for a lot of people is about the money or the interest rate or not getting the appliances delivered. I think it's the time. Uh, markets never sleep. I'm doing too much with markets to be out on a boat all You're the time. You're too busy to own I'm, a boat? I'm too busy to own a boat, yes. Do you golf? I, uh, I'm a member of two golf clubs and haven't played in three years.
<laughs> There's no question where my lo- loyalties lie. My You're friend. working your life away there, lad. No, no, no. It's, it is my life. Work. I love doing what I do. do you, well, how many hours a day do you work? Uh, you would believe me if I told you, but I, I, work, oh, I, would. I work about 16 hours a day. But I will say this. It's funny. Uh, I have a book coming out about work and the meaning of life. I do, that was a very good promo. And you it? didn't know that didn't, when you no, brought this up. I did not know yeah. that. That's very true. That's very true. All right, David, I want to thank you very much for joining us for the hour. Thanks You're so a good much. man. Thanks Appreciate a lot. It.